Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I want to talk about creating a blueprint for your break. And you know, the last episode, I talked about different ways that the Scandinavian countries take care of their health and wellness. And one of them or two of them included this break. And so today I want to define your why for serenity. Why do you want to take a break and have some more peace and calm in your life? And I was looking at Marilyn Paul's book. She was on episode 329, if you wanted to listen to that and hear more from her herself about her book called An Oasis in Time, How a Day of Rest Can Save Your Life. And I was looking at the chapter of getting traction for change. And she had so many good points. I really wanted to share them with you because what we do is we don't even pause long enough to think about why we want to have these changes made in our lives and have more rest, more of a break. And so the first part that was very interesting to me was why so many people want to make these changes and create what she calls an oasis in time. And I hear the same types of ruminations from people. So I wanted to share some of them that she has here and see if any of these resonate with you. Like, do you need a blueprint for a break? And why? And when you hear these statements, you're going to say, oh, I bet one or two of them are going to give you an oh-ho or an aha moment because I hear these same types of things from my clients. Here are a few of them. I would love one morning a week when I wake up without checking my cell phone or my email. Ah, doesn't that feel good to think that you could have that? And these are what people are looking for, just one morning a week. Another one says, I don't get enough relaxed downtime with my family. We're always on the run. Another one, very common with what I hear is, I can't stop doing things. There is always something else to do. I don't want to do, 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 and then collapse. I can feel this one. So many people that I work with, men and women alike, this is not one sex or the other. This is everybody in this current culture feeling like they have to do, 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 even in our downtime. Another person says, I'm burning out. I'm dragging all the time and I no longer care about what I'm doing. Now, this is a big sign of burnout, right? This is a big red flag that we would want to pay attention to. Another one says, I never get out in nature. I mean to, but something always comes up. I even bought a kayak to force myself to get out on the river, but I still don't go. I need more time in nature. And again, this ties back to what I was talking about on the last episode with the Scandinavian countries kind of nailing it with taking breaks, being cozy, and getting out in nature all on a regular basis. Another one she had here was, we have really good friends in the next town over and we haven't gotten together for six months. Or one that really rang true with me is, I have no regular time to stop and reflect. I can't do that in a minute or even an hour. I need extended time to slow down and ease my pace. 
Now, I don't know about you, but that really rings true for me. I require a lot of time to let the glitter in my snow globe come to the bottom and clear the water. I have a regular practice, of course, that's daily, but what I really enjoy is when I can have long extended period of time to slow down and ease at my own pace. See if that rings true for you. And I love that I have my regular practice, which you probably do too. Most of you listening here, when I get to chat with you, you tell me that you are doing short meditation practices and maybe it's time to extend it. Maybe that is all you need to do. Or maybe you are like me and you would really like to have not just minutes or an hour, but an extended period. And my favorite thing is to set a day aside. I like Sunday because... Even though Sundays are nothing like they used to be in the past, they still have a different energy about them. Some things have slowed down. Email doesn't seem to be so overwhelming. I can let it go for a day. But I really pine after those old Sundays. Back when I was a kid, Sundays, there were blue laws and stores weren't even open on Sunday. Essential things were open on Sunday. Liquor stores were not open on Sunday. I don't even think like big stores were open on Sunday. Things quieted down. It was a day of rest. No matter who you were, you got to have a day of rest. Families traditionally ate earlier in the day on that day. Not in my family, but all my friends' families did. And then the day was over. The big meal was earlier in the day. And then it was just R&R. And even as I got older, Sundays were quieter. They were just quieter. The phone didn't ring as much, and there wasn't as much, quote, to do. So maybe the world is not going to offer that to us, but maybe we can do that for ourselves. I don't do that every Sunday. I wish I was that disciplined to be able to have my life so ordered that I could take every Sunday as my little oasis in time. But I do like when it comes available. And like I said, I do have my quiet practices throughout every day. So I am not totally lost. But I do like that long day of moving as the spirit moves me. Sometimes those are actually very productive days because I got an urge, an inner calling to do something, a particular thing. It might even be cleaning a closet. But I went and did it through the urge, not through a to-do list. Boy, is that different. There is so much joy that comes from doing even a difficult, challenging project when it came from your inner heart saying, this is the time to do it. Let's work on it. You know, we don't want to wait until, what does the last person say here? I am in Marilyn's list that she had of statements was, I am out of touch with my inner compass. It's hard to listen to the still small voice within when I am either going a thousand miles an hour or flattened out from exhaustion. Yeah, that seems to be the one side or the other, right? We don't want to live in black or white like that. Most of life can be lived in those gray areas. Again, trying to find the harmony. So she had some exercises here that I thought would be helpful for you guys. And again, if you want to hear my conversation with Marilyn, she's just a delight. It was on episode 329. It's called An Oasis in Time with author Marilyn Paul. So She has some exercises here that can help generate more ideas for your Oasis Time purpose. So let's see if you can jot some of these down and maybe come back to them another time or just let them settle in you right now and see what you come up with. See if you can complete these sentences in a number of different ways. So the first one is my nonstop action keeps me from blank and fill in the blank with as many things as you need to put in there. 
The next one is, if I could put down my to-do list each week, I would blank. Next up, if I stopped rushing, I would feel blank. If I pushed myself less, I could blank. When I create oasis in time, I will experience more blank. When I create my oasis time, I will have more blank. If I could renew myself more consistently, I would blank. If I experienced real connecting time each week, it would mean blank. Now, some of these sentences are going to resonate with you. Others may not. But by putting in your urges into words, this can be really eye-opening and help you assess your actual purpose. When we don't know why we're doing what we're doing, we can get lost. And we're spinning our wheels, spending a lot of time doing a lot of things that, again, may not be getting us where we want to go. So if we can take these sentences with the blank at the end and fill those in. And I think here she suggests try completing each sentence in five different ways. Yes. So fill that blank in with five different choices. You may have a lot to look at. You can come back and listen to this again and jot down the ones that sound most appropriate for you. The ones that feel they're making your heart flutter a little bit. These are great, great exercises, and I hope you will take a moment to do them. I thank Marilyn for those, and I know she has some other good stuff here that I wanted to share because I have all my little stickers here. Another exercise that she suggests to help us find our blueprint or define our why for why we want to make the changes and feel more serenity. So she says here to get out a piece of paper and make a list of your answers to the following questions. So again, you might want to jot these down in your journal, or you may just want to come back to this. First off, she says, if there were no consequences, what would you be doing with your time? Let that sink in. What would you want to experience? Who would you want to be with? If you had all the time in the world and no demands on you, what would you do? How would achieving these things make you feel? I love these questions because we don't look at this often. We are running. No wonder we're anxious, have stress, find ourselves having panic attacks. We don't have any time for our nervous system to settle down. And we don't even know what it is that we would want to be doing if there were no consequences to our time, to who we were with, etc., good questions to ask ourselves. You can tell it's the beginning of the year. I like just trying to have more reflection, hoping that we can set the year up for going in the direction that we have set. We are setting the GPS, not the world around us, not the computer and the apps and the people and the jobs. And no, We are responsible for a lot of things and a lot of people, but we get to set our own GPS. What direction do you want to be going in? So the last piece I have for you here is that Marilyn said that she found her own desires for productivity. She's actually a productivity expert. Got 
out of hand very easily. And her natural urge to accomplish something of value can overwhelm her desires for rest. I'm sure some of you are nodding your head. There is always something to get done when I'm on the lookout for something to do. Even though I'm tired, stopping does not come naturally. I'm wondering if some of you can relate to that. Stopping doesn't come naturally. Now, it does come naturally to a lot of people. So don't get me wrong. This is not foreign to everybody. But I come and go with this. I think that might be like I'm an amnivert. Like I I can stop on a dime sometimes and other times I just feel like I have to keep going. It probably has to do with my own state of mind again, where I am at internally. We can examine some of these that are coming up strong counterproductive messages in our culture and come up with better ones like this in here. See if this can work better for you than that desire or that voice in our head that keeps telling us we need to keep going even though we're tired. I have a few of them here that she lists. There's five of them. First one is, I work better and smarter, not harder. I work hard with focus toward goals that I value. Again, we're setting ourselves up to go where we want to go. I respect my body and soul's need for rest and recuperation. This is real self-care, right? I become skillful about understanding my worries and difficult feelings. And finally, regular rest enables me to live my best life. And isn't that true? We forget that. We forget that we can work smarter, not harder, and that our life will go much better if we are rested when we need to be. I hope that you will be able to take some of this in and set up your 2024 GPS to go in the direction that will serve your mind, body, and spirit. And I look forward to hearing from you. Again, send me email, anxietycoachespodcast at gmail.com. And now for today's quote. Busyness is not a reason for not getting other things done. It is an excuse for not claiming your true priorities. And that's from Marilyn Paul. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com.